What's going on, party people? This your man Griff. Road trip. Rolling on down to Florida. Got my self all trimmed up. The missus took good care of me. Got me looking all fresh and so clean, clean. Spit shine. All that good stuff. <laughs> so I'm gonna give y'all a shot. Get in. I know people probably working, spending time with family, depending on, especially if you're on the West Coast, just getting up, getting you some breakfasts in you, and all that good stuff. I just figured I'd do a live. What's going on, party people? If I don't respond back to you, that's because I'm driving. I know if y'all put something in the chat, think I'm a jig there. Feel free to share out. But um, I'm headed down to Florida. Good morning, Miss is that Erica. What's going on, Miss Erica Jones? So I'm rolling on down to Florida, take care of some business for my pops. Um, he's living with me, sold his house down there. So I gotta grab a few things that's in it and then um, take care of some other stuff in Orlando, come on back up and get ready to rock and roll. But I figured I'd do a quick live just, you know, because every time I do these, I record these videos on the phone, they tend to be too gig and it takes forever. I mean, literally, sometimes it takes like eight hours for it to upload off my phone. So I don't feel like dealing with that today. So I just feel like do a live. What's going on, people? And um, have a little, little chat with y'all while I'm driving. So I got my my other number in there, my Google Voice number. Um, if y'all, if my connection gets spotty or whatever, um, let me know because I'm out here in the country right now in um, Suffolk. What's going on now? Good morning, lady. This is Carver. Craver, my bad. Yeah, so if y'all, what's going on now? Valerie. So if y'all, um, if my connection seems bad or whatever, or y'all need me to repeat something, I put my, my other number in there. Y'all can text me on that one. And um, or if you got a question, good morning, good morning, good morning, zone. This notary zone, notary zone. Um, feel free to text me on my on my number there, 757-797-5432. Um, y'all know the chat window be swinging through quick. But um, this morning, I just want to do a little chit chat. And I've been trying to sit down and talk. Um, I just been so busy. What's going on now? Yeah, I'm a dry safe. I'm a dry safe. I'm. I got my. I got everything alerted <laughs> and stuff. I got my camera here. My dual. My dual camera. So I got the camera pointing at me. I got the camera out there. Um, so if anybody roll up on me, I'm recording um, and all of that. So I'm gonna be safe driving somewhat the speed limit <laughs> based on the uh, flow of the traffic right now um, and all of that. But yeah, I'm going through a part of Suffolk uh, that you most definitely gotta drive the speed limit. And, um, and, uh, and the Popo, they be, they be hiding all up on the daggone um, signs you know direction signs and stuff so I'm, I'm being careful but hey i want to talk to y'all um as a title and it says i think it said your little business or my little business and um yeah we got the training coming up this week too um so all the classes are filled for um thursday and um friday um so yeah we got the training coming up I think I got a makeup class tonight. Just waiting for those people to register. There was a couple of people that had registered. They couldn't make it because of work. So I'm doing a follow up. And again, if anybody signs up for a class and for some reason you're having technical problems, what's going on, Ms. Gay? And um, if you're having any kind of technical problems, don't worry about it. We'll do a separate class for you or the group of y'all. Um, that you know might have missed out. So some people's having problems with their internet and all of that good stuff. So don't worry, you ain't gonna, you know, if you miss the class, we gonna make sure you, you know, you get a training. And I've even done some one-on-one -on -one with people 
um, who couldn't get in there and um, work with them. So that's not going to be a problem. But as the title says, um, I think I put the title up there called says um, your little business. The most res dis the most disrespectful thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can do a one on one with you, um, Veronica. Yeah, we can do a face to face one on one. So that's not a problem. Um, my numbers in there. Uh, there's the first police. Here they are. Yeah. Um, the first. Um, you can text me just to remind me so that I um that I can set it up with you. If you go to my website griffinnotary.com and I forgot to put it in the description but if you go to griffinnotary.com scroll down there's a form and you can um, request um, the one-on-one -on -one face to face and um, we'll get together for that um, things got so busy last night I had to cancel one that I was going to do last night so I got me and her going to catch up with each other and everything you know when I get back but as the title says, my little business um, or your little business, that is the most disrespectful phrase that anybody can say about your business. And I'm explaining why. And I think it's also disrespectful for us to say about our own business. But when you have somebody and they talk to you and they say, hey, what's going on, you know, John? Um, so how that little business of yours going? When people come to me like that, I mean, I, I literally like, okay, you're no longer part of my life. And I'm not trying, right, it's not a, a, um, a term of endearment. And years ago, years ago, I learned this years ago when I had um, started my first business, I was doing photography. And I was doing good. I mean, I was making bank. Um, well, a little bank, <laughs> not as much as I really wanted to. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm talking to this person and they was like, oh, so you still doing that little business of yours? And it just hit me in the spirit. And I was like, that was disrespectful. And I started praying and meditating on it. I'm like, okay, wait a minute, why are you? I'm like, not from a standpoint of saying you got a small business for the category, the classification of it, but like, oh, you got that little business, like, okay, you still doing that little thing? I'm like, oh, you don't, and see, when people talk to you about your business like that, in my opinion, I believe they don't believe that you're going to make it in your business. I don't believe they believe in your business. They don't believe in you or any of that. So they say that, all right, cop number two. <laughs> they say that, and <clears throat> I'm like, you don't have any confidence in me. Yeah, they be hating. And, and and that is, to me, the most disrespectful thing. Don't call your business a little bit. I know you're just getting started. You know, I got this little notary thing. No, it's not a little notary thing. Because when you understand, <laughs> you know, the business making big money. Yeah. When you understand truly what you have as a notary, above all these other businesses, all these other side hustles, this ain't little. And it only took me about six months into this thing when I started back in 2018 to realize what I had and what and what power that you know we have for us to be able to make some, some money and to make some positive changes in our lives and to do some things. And I'm not talking about power to lord over people, but just, you know, the um the influence and all of that i mean it can just change the game for you and i said this year and when i understood really when i understood okay i'm commissioned by the state to handle business on behalf of them and i'm something that you're just doing for a little bit and then you can let it go until the next side hustle come Man, you can you can really be in this for some one and, and just so you know, the majority of you have high. All right, I think I'm back. I think I'm back. All right, that's the bad part about being way out here in Suffolk. The good part is 
you can sort of do this go live and you ain't got too many cops rolling all up on you and everything but the bad part is the um connection can be very very spotty um so hopefully this this will come through and if i need to redo it later i will um but yeah i got in this because i wanted to be a notary i learned the, about you know the loan baby all right there we go i'm back you know, commercial real estate closing that's a big game changer for you you get into estate planning working with lawyers to be there um you know to, to do um the estate planning and to notarize those documents all of this stuff is very important so it's more than just the residential loan closings and that's one of the things that i learned that okay this can branch out into so many different areas and things to affect some positive change in people's lives so don't disrespect your business by calling a little even though i know you're nervous your, your, this is your first business. Even though whether you have an LLC or not, this is still considered a business. And you take this serious because what I've learned through experience, the more serious I take my business, the more serious others will. And the thing is, you want to keep people taking your business serious. And those key people are the ones who are going to do business with you. Unfortunately, your mom and them, they, they may not want to do business with you, so they may never take your business serious. Your cousin, <clears throat> Ray Ray, and, and, and little TT that's now a grown man, and, and all of that, and man man, all of them, they may never do business with you, and that's fine. But you still respect your business, and that was one of the things that I learned from the get-go, that I had to respect my business. I had to believe in it, and call it as it was my business and i did not look at it as something that would just fly by night or what have you now whether i ran it correctly that's a different story whether i did everything that i know i needed to do and really a lot of it was that i didn't know everything i needed to do so i struggled but now at this point in my life i've learned a lot i've grown and I understand more about what I need to do in the business. Hey, let me know um, if y'all can still hear me um, and my connection and all that. Hopefully everything is still rolling. Um, either say something in the chat or you can text me. My number's in the description, 757-797-5432. Just to make sure I'm still connected with y'all. Cause like I said, I'm way out here in the country part of the world of um, Virginia. So the internet might be a little bad. All right, cool. Yeah, so that is what happens, you know. And of course, people who know you and all that, they're the ones, even recently somebody said that, you know, about my wife's business, people have said that about mine. I've talked to a few people and, and I get it. You know, this is your first shot at it. And you're like, well, you know, I'm just trying this thing out and, and that's fine. And But don't call your business little. Don't call it, you know, don't, don't diminish it even though you don't see it, okay? And this is where you gotta actually operate in faith. You see it, you, gain, you gathered all the information and you see the path and the road ahead of you for your business. And even though it has not materialized just yet, even though all of the pieces aren't in play, even though the bank account still says zero, if you're committed to doing this, I'm telling you, it will work and that's why i stress so 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 much become a good notary stop rushing through these things operate within guidelines of your state do not get influenced and intimidated by these companies that want you to do all of this other stuff that has nothing to do with what you are commissioned to do you have to remember you are commissioned by your state Yes, somebody's willing to say, I'm going to train you. Yes, somebody's willing to say, I'm going to hire you to do these loan closings. But you got to know that you are obligated to follow your state laws. And if your state does not allow you to do certain things with regard to notarizations and dealing with documents, then you have to honor that and stick with that. Let me let this truck slide on by. Case in point, 
one of the first gentlemen that I started working with when I came on YouTube, he um, gave me a call and was asking me about some documents that they wanted him to get re-signed and it didn't have the AK on them, a AKA didn't have say John Jones, AKA John A. Jones or something to that effect. It didn't have the, the AKA on there. And they asked him to go, they said, well, you did wrong. You didn't get this done right because it, you didn't have them signed with the AKA. But there was nowhere on the documents that said you need to do the AKA. Then they said, we need you to go back, have them do it, and then backdate it to that time period, which was a while ago, almost a month ago, maybe a little bit more than a month ago. And he was double checking with me, which he already, for the most part, he knew, but he was like, I just want to check with you, Grid. Just, he said, that doesn't sound right, especially the AKA part. And I said, nah. And these companies, sometimes these title companies, and there are a lot of great ones out there, but then there's a lot of ones that's off on the side that'll try to get you to do stuff that you shouldn't be doing and then at that point it is up to you as the notary the one commission in your state to stand firm and do what you're supposed to do legally so that's why i say this isn't a little business this thing has some impact and if it's not done right it can just mess a whole lot of stuff up for people so I mean, I just wanted to come on real quick and share that with y'all um, that you don't have a little business. And, 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 I, I'm not, and I'm not telling you, you don't have to do what I do, but I, I be not. Okay, there we go back. When, this is to you, when, when people call my business little and you can tell, sometimes they just say it because that's what they think they're supposed to say but then sometimes you can feel the energy from them. And if your energy is saying it as a term of disrespect, like putting it down, like telling me, well, I really don't think your stuff ain't about nothing. That's probably gonna be the last time I talk to you. I'm serious. That's gonna be the last, that, because I have nothing else for you. Because now every time I see you, all I see is disrespect. I just see nothing but disrespect. And when I see disrespect on a person, I want to do it. If you try, if you try, if if you try to confront them about it, they're going to try to defend what they said and make it seem like, oh, it's really not what I meant. Oh, I'm sorry, but nah, nah, that that it rolled off your tongue too easy. So confronting them about it, ah, I mean, you can, but I'm gonna tell you that can be a difficult thing, and it all depends. It really all depends on the person and in, this, in the relationship. And if you really want to keep that relationship, then you're going to have to find a way to talk to them and like, hey, look, don't disrespect my business like that. I, you may not have thought you meant anything by it, or maybe you didn't, but that that really offended me because you sort of put my business down like it didn't mean anything. And I really would appreciate you not doing that. You know, we just don't talk business. Don't ask me about my business if you can't keep that word little out you know, and all of that. And hopefully, you know, the relationship can stay preserved and, and, and go forward. But if it can't, then it is what it is. And unfortunately, from jealousy, from a lack of knowledge, um, you know, just pure ignorance, and ignorance doesn't mean you're dumb and stupid, it just means not knowing, those kind of things can happen. And and it's unfortunate, especially those that are in our own family, in our own community, would treat us this way. Um, but that tends to happen a lot, you know. So, <laughs> so yeah, that was a wake-up call for me. And that's with anything that you're doing. Anything that you are progressing in, you're trying, I mean, even from buying a house, you're in an apartment, you're trying to buy your first home, you got an old car, you're trying to buy a, a, a newer car, you're trying to move, you're, trying, you're getting married, anything, and then somebody says something to belittle it. You know, it's like, and, and, and like I said, you can tell by the energy because it's like they're making a point to let you know 
what they think of your business. And it ain't nice. It ain't nice. And like I said, you know who it is, they, they pretty much cut off. And I don't need anything to do with you. And if they press, I'm like, man, how come you? The reason why I ain't dealing with you because you don't respect my business. You don't respect what I'm doing. So there's no need for me to communicate with you or be a part of you because this business is my life, okay? This is a part of my life. And you don't believe in it. You don't respect it. So bounce. It's that simple. And everything, you know. And that's, that, and you know, or just set the boundaries of your, of your relationship with them and then you keep going. But... I just wanted to encourage y'all with that. Stay focused on doing the correct notorial thing. And one thing else I want to throw in here that I'm starting to come to an understanding of when it comes to this document presentation. What I did some research and I'm still researching and what I can say is what I've learned. And this is just what I'm concluding to. There's nothing that's definitively said this but based off of what I've been reading what I've concluded is simply this if you're going to be working directly with a title or escrow company and you're going to primarily be really really working with them they may want you to gain a deeper knowledge of the documents to explain especially if you're going to be working with them on a strong, tight, consistent basis. But then when you are mobile and you're working with multiple different companies, it's gonna be hard for you to get into a rhythm of understanding and knowing that company's documents, that company's process and procedures because you're working for a lot of different companies. And those companies, they want you to get in and get out. And, you, and, and then what I'm also researching in the scene is that from the state perspective who commissioned us, they are constantly saying, we don't need to understand the documents. We don't need to be trying to interpret them since we didn't draw the documents up. But the actual, oh, I'm gonna get Franklin, Virginia. Um, but the actual signing companies or title escrow companies on a lot of them, they're saying on their websites like, yeah, our notaries will walk you through the process. Our notaries will do this. Our notaries know the process and understand this. And I'm like, well, if you're saying that, then that must mean I must be working for you. I must be really, really working for you for me to understand and know your process and to be able to guide you and explain stuff and to break stuff down which again still blows my mind because I'm like, okay, if I'm not the one who drew up the documents, why am I explaining it? Why am I explaining it to the point of making sure that you get it? Because if somebody gave me a power of attorney and said, hey, go go make sure this power of attorney is done, like I did, I did a power of attorney and I've done um, wills and not one time did the lawyers who gave me the, gave me the business said, hey, I need you to make sure they understand what they're signing. They said, just make sure, you know, they said, you know what to do, notarize, make sure that happens. So, and I do get it and I understand the, the severity and the, the importance of the loan doc and how much money is involved and all of that. But again, what does the state require us to do? And that's where my loyalty lies with the state because they're the one who gave me my commission. You see, that's where it lies. However, if I'm going to be working with this company, then I need to understand, okay, well, they may want me to do <clears throat> things to this level. And we may need to have a conversation to make sure that I understand fully what I'm going to be saying or what I can say, and that they're going to provide me the necessary top cover if something blows up. Because if I say something, and especially if I don't know the backstory about what's going on with these documents or what had been going on and then i'm trying to explain something that the loan officer done said and again keep in mind this is coming most of the time from the title company and signing company saying i need to explain but the loan company a lot of times hasn't said so so they talking with the loan officer the loan officer yeah we got this we got that 
and then something goes down and I don't know anything about it. And then they're going off on me or they're going off of what I say. I just want to make sure that there's top cover for me with, with regard of that. And if it is, then cool. But if it's not, if it's like, oh, well, you made a mistake, you know, and legally they're like, well, you shouldn't have been doing that anyway, then I don't want to be in that position. And I don't think anybody, irregardless whether you're a notary or a doctor or a lawyer or anything, you just don't want to be in a position of opening your mouth and saying stuff. And then the people who has strongly encouraged you to say stuff are like, well, it ain't really too much. You you sort of on your own with that. That that ain't good. That's not good. Okay. We, that's not where we should be at. And you know, and that's that's my concern. So again i'm not against sharing or talking about the documents if that's what i'm allowed to do and if that's what i should be doing but if not let me just do my job <laughs> correct that's right that's do y'all talk correct it is because we if y'all go to one of the the video that I got up there called LSA versus NSA, I really try, I really break that down from a Virginia standpoint, and then go to Superior Notary Services and they break down the difference between an, an NSA notary signing agent and a loan signing agent LSA. And when I read that, I'm like, when I understand it, and the key phrase that they said in there was a loan signing agent understands the loan process, and based off of the way they were saying it the loan signing agent actually is more in-house with the company that they're with, you know, with that company. They're basically an employee of that company. So as a loan signing agent, you're really like working hand in hand. And if I'm trying to be a business owner and not a W-2, then I may not want to go that route, go direct. You know, I really think things are more oversaturated with regards to people going direct than working with the signing services because there's a lot of notaries, but the signing services are like, okay, we got a lot of notaries, but there's only a small portion of them that actually know what the heck they're doing and can get this stuff done right. So to me, that opens the door up for anybody who has some good integrity and, got, and had the ability to do the notarizations correctly to go out here and make some money. So I think it's oversaturated with everybody trying to go direct because that company only had but so much business. But them signing companies, they got connections with some everybody. And that title company in your around the corner from your house, they may only be pushing 130 closings a month and splitting that between five to seven notaries. You ain't really making that much unless they paying you three, four hundred dollars a pop. And if they can't pay you three, four hundred dollars a pop, then you only doing 10 signings from them or maybe 15 at one tw at 100 so you talking about a 1500 you making so where are you trying to make up the rest of your money that's how i'm looking at this i think it's a conversation that really and honestly should be had i really believe somebody needs to really explain to us why you know we are being asked to do this and it shouldn't be about just to try to show how smart we are and how well versed we are in the documents and all of that none of that matters because if you're trying to get people in and out in 30 minutes or really for an hour there ain't too much explaining you really need to be doing and then also everybody talks about going with amrock 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 that's all i keep hearing and I finally got on with them and I got to finish doing my, my training stuff with them and all of that. Amrock, all I'm hearing is they're paying $65, $85, something like that. And the signing is only taking barely 20 minutes. So I'm sitting here like, okay, if Amrock is like, okay, get in, get out. And we doing these hybrid signings where you don't really have to be up in there like that. Then why the heck is everybody else so, so, so bent on the notary sitting there given a dissertation or a synopsis of their of their doctoral thesis on these documents you know what i'm saying i mean because it's, it's again i'm just talking here 
it blows my mind that after four months of a, of a human being working on getting a loan closed, that at the time of the closing, they don't know, oh, that's the wife. What's going on, baby? She must be on break from a um, teaching class. It doesn't make sense to me that if you started in October of last year, and now we're closing in April, that at no point in time you actually understood what you were signing, what you was doing, and you need every single document in that loan packet explained to you before you sign it. And then I'm being told that I gotta get this done in an hour. And as I've always said, and I say in the training class, in order for you to give a summary of anything, you have to know that item. So if you don't understand the document that you read, if it's not clear to you, how can you summarize it? If it's 17 lines in there and you're trying to summarize it in, you really have to have a knowledge, a knowledge and understanding and comprehension of that item in order for you to summarize it. One of one of our one of my community black people's favorite movies is what's going on, baby? One of our favorite movies that we grew up with, depending on how old you are, is Coming to America. Many of us can summarize that movie because we've seen it. New Jack City, we've seen it and we can summarize it. Somebody, if you haven't seen something enough and looked at it deeply enough, you can't summarize it. And there's people who can look at a movie. You can have two people look at the same movie and one person can walk out of that movie and give you a summary of it. And other person like, I just know it was Godzilla versus King Kong and they was fighting. And the other person can sit there and be like, well, I can tell you this, this, that, that, that. I ain't giving no spoilers on that. That is a good movie. But you got to have a comprehension. And if you're in the mindset of comprehending, and let's be real, not everybody who's a notary is on the same comprehension level. It took me a, a while to really get my comprehension level up to speed. So I'm saying as a new notary going out here for the first, second, 20th time, you really need to get in and get out. And if you're just gonna spend six, eight months trying to study, memorize these documents and you're working for signing companies, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're working with a company that you've never dealt with before, they got a different layout of documents and all of that, now you got to spend time. And to me, the time that you got to spend trying to understand these documents and practice your spiel and all of that, that's, that's hours and time that you could be making money on doing other signings. So that's what I'm saying. You got you to really balance it out. And if you're working a full-time job and then you're sitting here trying to study and memorize and learn a whole loan packet, It just got to be balanced. It has to be balanced. But I will say this. As you do these signings, you will learn more about the documents and you will become more comfortable with them and you will learn what you should and should not say. I'm going to tell you now, you because like there's one called the borrower's consent to use the tax return. If you read that, the way it's read, it sounds like they're taking your information and just selling it to any and everybody. They talk about selling it. They talk about um, uh, selling it slash sharing it. They talk about uh, marketing it. Uh, you're saying they, you're giving them permission to use your tax return and it's um, and that company's um, partners and stuff. And it's like, okay, use my tax returns for what? And I tried reading that one time in the beginning and the dude he wasn't gonna sign the papers because he was like, who are you selling my information to? Where are you, where are you marketing it to? And I was like, man. Correct. And see, that's the thing. I mean, a lot of people is like, I wanna, I wanna be able to answer their questions. That is not our role. I have to find the information. And there was one of the, we, let me say it this way, people. Notaries are supposed to be a neutral third party. Now, I'm, and now, hear me out with this. If you are neutral, 
as a notary we are a neutral third party we are unbiased meaning we don't care whether the papers get signed or not our role is to sign the notarize the documents when they do get signed we are not to influence the decision either direction we are not to influence the decision either direction what up harris what up tiffany good morning good morning to y'all if we or dr tech okay if we are not to influence the decision of a person sitting across from us then we have to be mindful of what we say out of our mouth that could lead us into trying to explain something that can help them decide whether they want to sign these papers or not that's the way i interpret my role and i do know the, the nna says that we're supposed to be neutral and i've seen information out there that says we're supposed to be neutral and unbiased so if you understand just by definition the word neutral and unbiased that means we can't influence the decision of anybody in either direction therefore if somebody has a question about something we refer them to the expert of that document so that they can get the proper answer that they desire and need it is not my role to try to help you and if i'm wrong and i'm pretty sure somebody that works with a title company they probably gonna run back to a title company or a signing company and say griff said this i'm willing to be corrected okay and we can come on here and you can break it down to me and explain it to me and help me to understand you know you know notaries are required to be at every loan closing if you are in this, you see it there, right? So if we're required to be at every loan closing, we're required to be unbiased and not to influence the decision. And what people don't realize, and this is what why I love doing the loan closing, is because, and, and again, I got to find this information that was out there a couple years ago, and I haven't been able to find it. The point of a notary in real estate closings is to ensure that nobody forces that person to sign these documents because think about it if the mortgage person the mortgage the lender or the title company and all of them are sitting down with that person and that person has second thoughts because they have so much writing they have so much writing on it they're going to be like or could be you know what you really need to sign don't worry about it. everything's fine just go ahead on the sign and many of you have heard that when you've been in there somebody has a cd that's wrong that CD wrong, the numbers ain't right on that CD, and then the person is like, I don't want to sign it. And they're like, well, don't worry about it. Just go on and sign and we'll get it fixed later. That ain't our role. We aren't supposed to be in that position to say, well, just go on and sign. That's why, and I'm going to say this, and a lot of people are going to probably be mad at me, that's why we ain't supposed to be using that right to cancel as a crutch to make people sign the documents. Saying, well, just sign the documents and, and you got the right to cancel. If I'm not mistaken, the NNA teaches that we're not supposed to use that right to cancel that way. We, if they, we let them know they have a right to cancel, but not to say if they got questions, well, just go ahead and look at the right to cancel. And I start, and I was doing that in the beginning, and then I learned, okay, and I wish I could remember which company, but one of the companies said, don't do that. If you know, don't use the right to cancel as a way to get them to sign and tell them where well, you can look at it later and all of that. If they got concerns, then we have to defer them to the people who can who can um, mitigate those concerns, or if that's the right word, you know, quash those concerns. So, as a neutral third party, like an arbitrator, an arbitrator is like, okay, I'm here to make sure that both sides get this reconciled. So the notary is not supposed to be in a position to where they can influence because we don't have a stake in this. That's why. In all honesty, if you know a couple in your neighborhood that's selling a home or buying a home, they could actually have you as the notary. When I sold my pop's house, I didn't go to signing order. I didn't go to snap docs. I called up a notary that I knew and said, hey, can you um, notarize these documents? The title company said, hey, go find your notary and get these documents done. That's what they said. Go, go, get it, go find your notary and go get the, the um, document signed. They didn't say, hey, go find a title office. Hey, go find go find somebody on SNAP. They say, if you know a notary, 
and they say, so, and I, they know I do loan court. They say, find you a notary and have them do it. And I've done that for other people. Where other notaries, subscribers on here have called me up in the, and I've sat there and done stuff for them. So you can call your own notary in there. The notary is supposed to be neutral in this. The notary ain't supposed to have a dog in the fight. My role is just to verify your identity, make sure you sign those documents correctly and to notarize correctly. So whether you bought the house or not, sold the house or whatever, refinance, that's none of my concern. That because I ain't had, I ain't had nothing to do with this until they sent me documents or sent me the order to say, hey, we got a sign in on the 13th. Can you handle it at 7 p.m.? Yes. That's the first I'm hearing about the whole thing. As a matter of fact, I probably don't even know your name just yet when I first see the sign the order until they assign it to me and all of that. So if I'm out of the loop for all of this time, right, in the journey state that that died, you don't give depth and detail, correct. So that's why I'm saying the this clear distinction from notary trainers, that distinction should be made concerning this explaining of the documents and all of that. And if it's a personal meaning, if it's that company's way of doing things, I get it and I respect that. What the state has authorized me to do and you haven't verified that, then that needs to be done. They have a personal preference that you need to um, clock out and let somebody know you're leaving. You know, you, you, or you have a personal preference just getting up and leaving whenever you want. And they say, no, you need to clock out and let somebody know. All right, that was another cop. Good, they ain't going, they, as long as they're going that way, I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. We have personal preferences, even within our own business. I mean, we still have to follow the state laws or whatever that entity is. So no notary trainer, nobody should be encouraging us to do stuff that is outside the guidelines of our state. And in my opinion, and a lot of people ask me what I run a signing company. After doing this for three years, hey, good morning, Miss Mary Thompson. Yeah, I talked to her the other day. Yeah. Um, based on what I'm learning, if I'm going to start a signing company, and this is also for you, those of you who want to start signing companies, if I start a signing company or a title company or any of that, I need to make sure that I understand the laws concerning the notaries in these various states so that as a business owner, I'm not putting my key person, and to me, the notary is a very key person. As I always said, the notaries are the most important, but the least powerful. The people who got the most powerful power is the people who got the money, and that's the lenders. So I'm looking at this as, if I'm a signing company, and I don't want things blowing up in my face, then I need to make sure that I've done everything possible to ensure that the notary, the last leg of this here journey of this loan document, this sell, this 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 purchase or this sell, this selling of the um, property, does not have a hiccup, and that that notary is empowered to do what they're supposed to do, and not get in trouble, and that way that the loan doc can get recorded mainly that deed. So that means if I got somebody in Iowa, I need to have a clear understanding of what an Iowa notary can and cannot do. Hence. That's where the NNA comes in. So to me, the signing companies, the title companies need to have a proper relationship with the NNA, as well as the trainers, not from a marketing standpoint of pushing their business, but from a standpoint of, okay, if there's something that I'm teaching that's not in line with a state law, then I need to have the NNA to back me up and to let me know yay or nay. That's where it goes at. And we're required to make sure we stay in compliance, but sometimes I feel the people who hire us don't have that same requirement on them. They're not being asked to be in compliance with our state guidelines. Yes, they're being in compliance with their own state guidelines, wherever they're based out of, but they're leaving it up to us. And then when we say, okay, here's what my state guideline says, Therefore, I'm going to do what my state says 
but it's opposite of what they want, then it's like we don't want to use you no more because you're not, you're being difficult, you're being this, you're being that. And I'm like, okay, you can't have it both ways. You can't sit there, hey, what's going on, TXB? You can't have it both ways. We're saying, we want you to backdate stuff. But at the same time, notary, you're responsible in the terms of service of making sure you stay in compliance with your state laws and guidelines and regulations. So I'm staying in compliance with that. But then you're like, why won't you do this? Because that's outside of the state guideline. Well, we need you to do it anyway. At that point in time, that's where I think the NNA who certify us should be brought in and be like, okay, y'all the arbitrary NNA, what are we supposed to do? I think the state should be in, involved and say, hey, state, this company is asking me to do something that is outside the guidelines that you asked me to do. What should I do? Is there a, is there a, a, a avenue of which I can do what they're asking? Either yes or no. But the notaries are left out on the island to make a determination as to whether we're going to continue to make money by doing what this person says or our printer and everything done turned into a paperweight because that company is now making us look bad because we tried to follow the state guidelines and there's nobody to back us up on it. And that is really what's going on. So if you really want to be a notary and doing all of this, especially the loan closings, that's what you're faced with. We're supposed to follow our state guidelines. People are telling us, nah, you can do it this way, you can do it that way. And I'm like, but that's not right. And you can show them proof. I've had companies tell me that any they don't know what they're talking about. I'm like, okay, they're they getting what they're telling me from my state. And my state says I can't do that. So, so now what? Well, I've been doing it for 30 years, so you can do it. Okay, give me proof that I can. You need to just trust me. I mean, this is what I've been told. Just trust me. I'm like, who are you that I need to trust? Because this is our first time actually even talking with each other. And the only reason why we're talking with each other because I follow my state guidelines and you didn't like it because it didn't match with your lender, meaning the most powerful. The lender said, do this. And you're like, okay, I'm going to go get it done. And the notary is being told to do something that's outside the state the guidelines so that that means from the, from the going up to the lender nobody is ensuring that the state guidelines are being followed and then you're asking the notary to bless it and then we get in trouble you want to sue us and our e and o nah i ain't putting myself in that situation so while everybody's worrying about all this document explaining and everything, that's really the heart of where I see this at because I've yet to hear anybody say, hey, go do this, I got your back. Don't worry about it, any blowback, I got you covered. That's where I'm at with this. So that's why this business ain't no little business, this ain't no side hustle because there's too many other ramifications in there. If somebody don't get their food from Grubhub or, or Postmates or whatever, all that's gonna happen is they're gonna, they're gonna mess around and ask them they got, if they got a lawyer and bail money. Yeah, I mean, all of that is, all of that. Because like I said, Grubhub and all of them, if the person don't get their food, they'll send it back out. They're gonna get their food one way or the other, get refunded. But this stuff here, I mean, this is this is this is big time. This is truly, truly big time. So I just want everybody to do it right. And I'm not talking about just the notice. I'm talking about the whole thing. So if there's any title company, escrow company, loan office, anybody that stumbles across this video, I'm not trying to bad mouth you or put you down or any of that, honestly. All I'm saying is we have to do it right to the best of our ability. We all make mistakes here and there due to a lack of knowledge. We don't, we're not aware. Um, it would be great if every state offers some detail, you know, good training. Um, and I and I have to give, I mean, I, I understand what the notary trainers are out there trying to do that. They're trying to, you know, come with some continuity and some decorum and all of that. But my thing is simply this, a lot of that training out there isn't, 
centered on proper notarizations. They're just teaching us how to run the business and then telling us to go to the NNA. And I'm like, I just I just have a hard time believing that I should be paying 250 to 500 dollars to learn how to run a business. And I haven't even learned how to do what the business is about, which is notarizing. And I got questions about that and I'm stumped on that and I'm confused on that. And you're telling me, yeah, you can make all this money, but I don't know really what the heck I'm doing. And you're not teaching me that. And you're telling me, oh, go over here and figure that out. And but, and I can learn, and then I'm going over there for way less, more than half off of what you're telling me to pay you. I, that just don't make no daggone sense. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just don't make sense. They be paying all that money and you ain't even learning how to do the job. They not even willing to teach you how to do the job. Or they're teaching you based on just where they live at. And that's it, you know. All right, I'm about to have to end this because I'm really going into a bad area. To me, anybody's training system needs to have something about what they, what they do teach and what they don't teach up front before you sign up. Um, they need to say, hey, this is what we are about. Not after I get in there, oh, I ain't gonna teach you this, I don't teach you that. You gotta go figure this out, you gotta go figure that out. Nah, uh-uh, nah, uh-uh, mm -mm. Teach me how to run a business and all of that, marketing and everything, maybe $150. That's the most to me it should cost. Oops, sorry about all that bumping, 150. 150, all right, cool. 500? and 80% of what you teach me is not applicable in my state, that ain't right. That ain't right. But um, I'm gonna go on and end this, y'all. I wasn't planning on talking this long. Thanks for hopping in and everything. Feel free to share. Um, we got training and everything gonna be popping tomorrow night. I think I got, like I said, I got a makeup session for some folk tonight and everything. So um, we're gonna be doing what it do and um, Y'all have a great one. I'll probably hop on later because I'm about to hop on 95. Now I'm over here in Frank, I mean, um, Emporia, Virginia. So hop over here and um, I ain't saying no names. I mean, y'all, y'all, look, y'all been out here long enough. Y'all been out here long enough. All I'm saying is in any other industry, they teach you everything you need to know to be successful if you're going i'm a, and i'm gonna say this and end it on this here y'all if you buy a chick-fil-a franchise a mcdonald's franchise they don't just tell you hey, or here's how to have a they don't just stick you in the building they teach you every aspect of the business so you can be successful they don't just teach you okay well here's how to flip a burger they teach you not just the marketing of your business but how to run the whole daggone thing and if you're gonna teach me about notary, then teach me everything so that I can go out here and be successful knowing that if I don't do it right, I could end up in jail like the lady down there in um, whatever, doing the election thing. So if I can end up in jail, what well, dad gonna teach me right to keep me from going in jail? Don't just give me this, oh, okay, well, you know, I'm gonna teach you how to just go out here and market and go direct and. And, and throw some gift baskets and some gift cards. Bump that, cause gift baskets and gift cards ain't getting me out of jail. That ain't gonna feed my family when I'm in lockup. All right? The only thing them gift baskets gonna do is keep keep that dude off me in cell block four, all right? And y'all know what cell block four is. So I'm trying not to be in cell block four and you talking about, yeah, go do this, do that. Nah, 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 bump that. Bump that, I ain't trying to go to jail, okay? No cell block for here, not for me, uh-uh. So, all I'm saying is this, and I ain't asking anybody to cancel anything with anybody, all I'm saying is this. If you're gonna teach somebody, teach them. If you're teaching them the business, teach them the part of the business that's supposed to make them money. Marketing doesn't make you money. Marketing gives you the opportunity to make money. But what makes us money is when we can actually do the business, when we can actually go in there and 
make the money and do the notarizations and all that correctly. That's what makes us the business. That is it. Because many of you haven't even marketed yourself yet and you already getting orders for call. I'm um, getting um notification for orders. And you're like, man, I ain't even, I ain't even barely got started and I'm already getting notifications. So you ain't even marketed to anybody. <laughs> yeah, sell block for y'all know what I'm talking about. CB4, that's right, y'all. <laughs> so you haven't even marketed yourself and you already got people saying, hey, I want you to do this loan buy, this debt settlement. I want you to do this in reverse mortgage application. So it's not so much the marketing that's gonna always get you the business. It's the fact that you have something they need, which is the ability to notarize documents. And when you have the ability to meet somebody's need, marketing does not necessarily have to take place. When they find out just through whatever means that you have the ability to do something for them that they need done. And as one of the guys I told you I listened to named Mike Murdoch, he's a preacher out there in Texas. Years ago, he said this, people only pay you for the problems you solve, not the ones you create. So marketing doesn't necessarily solve problems. You notarizing correctly solves problems. But your inability to do to solve the problem, meaning properly notarize after you've marketed yourself, that's going to be a problem. That's where the problem going to come in at. And they're going to drop you. And they're going to be like, deuces. Or you're going to be getting locked up. You're going to say, handcuffs in the front or in the back. See over there in cell block four. And then I buy your printer and all that stuff from you at about 10% of what you paid for it. And I sell it on eBay for about 400% of what I bought off of you. And we'll be good to go. Peace. Y'all have a good one, y'all. See y'all on the flip side. <laughs> That's right. Clink, clink.